Okay. Hello and welcome to our weekly podcast where we talk about the latest news, events, trends, whatever may uh, strike our fancy that's related to AI and image and video generation. We're your hosts, Hirad and Milad. And what are we talking about this week, Milad? Um, I think we're talking about the, the context, uh, the flux context and how you can actually use it uh, more than just basic editing and image color replacement and things like that we saw a post here on uh, on reddit talking about this and maybe we can pull that up and have a look at what he's doing here yeah yeah so flux context i thought this was a good post on reddit that talked about some of the things that's possible so if you're not familiar with it flux context is this open source model made by the creators of flux as the name suggests that is basically an editing model. So you can basically give it an existing image and a description of what you want changed, and it will make really intelligent edits to the image. And here, this user is basically showcasing some of the more advanced things you can do with it. So they're, they're kind of using it to uh, combine the composition that they've kind of sketched out with a particular character that they're giving the model. One thing I think is important to mention here is that uh, he is using the Flux Context Pro. Right. But here we're going to try it out and see if we can do this with Flux Context uh, Dev that was released a few days ago. Right, right. Because the Pro is not available for us uh, mere mortals to run on our own machines. But the, Well, yeah, you can, you can use the API, obviously. But yeah, right. you're not going to be able to run it locally. Right. So do you have something to show us with, uh, with running this? Yeah, so I set this up on SSD. Let me just uh, quickly pull this up. Uh, let me share my screen here. Yeah, let me just open my config UI. Okay, so I got the uh, the workflow that we were using on that one, and I we kind of made the similar images based on on the Reddit post. And here we're using the Flux context. Dev has mentioned uh, wrote a little prompt that we think is kind of similar. Let's run it and see what kind of result we're going to get on the dev version. FYI, I'm running an H100 here, so hopefully it's going to be fast on running, creating these images. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not great. It's actually kind of funny. Let's see. So it maintained, it gave us a car, but I guess it gave us a car because you, you prompted it to give us a car, but it maintained the second image into yeah, the yeah. scene as well. And kind of like the... Uh... The, the pose of the of this guy is kind of similar, holding the hand up. Yeah. I mean, the image, it kind of looks like it was just cropped into this one. Right. <laughs> so it's like I'm not, not, not much intelligence away. going on. I'm blown away by the fact that it can do like what it did with the person. Right? Like, uh, yeah, obviously this is not like a great image, but the fact that it can like take the person and like rotate it and, and have them in like a different pose that's not exactly the same that's kind of cool yeah uh, well let's see let's see if we can change something about the prompt to make it maybe a little bit better so what do i have here combine these and a fluid scene make the man the first image of car viewed from the front okay let's change this a little bit uh, driving a car with the composition of the uh in second image if you have an idea let me know so in my experience, each model kind of wants to be prompted Oof. in its... That's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> so yeah, in, in my experience, uh, each model kind of wants to be prompted in like a particular way. So I, I learned this by like playing a, uh, a lot with uh, Juan, which was the video generation model. Right. And I found that sometimes like the order in which you describe different elements made a lot of difference. So here I haven't played around with this uh, context model. I think this came out with just last week. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly it. how the model wants to be prompted. I'm guessing what we're I mean, it's is... I mean, it's flux. It is flux. So it's a, it, it is natural language. Right. So maybe what we're trying to describe here could be a little bit more natural. Like what right. is the final image we're trying to get? It's an image of a guy driving a car in that specific setting, like a yeah. composition based on a drawing and the the, the guy that we have in the first picture. I feel like maybe our prompt is not as, as natural as it might be. It could right. be. Um, maybe, why don't we say? start with the composition? Uh, create a fluid scene uh, with the composition of the second image. A man is driving a car. Fluid scene with the car. So, okay. No, I mean, like, keep, keep, the, keep the... Oh, okay. What do I have? 
I created the scene with the composition of the second image. The man in the man, first image. Man is in first image is, is driving, driving the car. The car, because we don't, we don't want. If it, I feel like if you say the car, it's gonna just right. put the might, yeah, put the drawing again. Uh, image is driving a car. Frame Should we mention bridge. anything from frame terms? Okay. I really wish it had uh, some sort of spell check. Okay. The man is definitely the man. Yeah. It's it really is still trying to like put the uh, the sketch in there. How about we put a... How about we just forget about this like composition and just let it... What do we just say? What do we just say? Like it's a photo. Drive me a car. Frame to... The windshield. Is that how you would describe that? I guess that's kind of how you would describe that final image. Let's see if it picks up man. Yeah, pretty good. I don't know that's, why the car all of a sudden doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's yeah, not that. Maybe it actually like, looks like it's driving through the trunk or something. Like, is that the yeah, trunk? Yeah, exactly. I think, I think he's driving through the trunk. Okay. Yeah, the car is not making a ton of sense, but like it's trying. This is probably the best image we got so far. The guy is definitely the guy. Yeah. I'm just going to try this one more time. Yeah. What if you change the car to something like a sedan? I wonder if it will pick up on more hmm. specific attributes. Yeah, okay, for whatever reason, it's driving like a giant 18-wheeler yeah. truck. But, and I don't know why he keeps putting him in the middle. That's actually some something another Redditor mentioned, that uh, when they tried this on the dev, they couldn't get the driver to be on the exact side. They always put it in the middle. Which is can we prompt? Can we try prompting for it? If, I, if I'm prompting that specific, they might as well just not have the second image. Yeah, that's true. You know, like this. Okay, that 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 one just completely made no sense. Come on. The car, the car is correct. The the, the person car is, is sitting in the middle for some reason. The car is actually yeah really good, <laughs> but like it insisted on having the. Oh, you know what? Good I point. wonder if that that makes a difference. Like it's really trying to get keep that. Right. It's that is like that interesting. Attribute. I wonder if that's like a just a if something we could change about the uh, workflow to solve for that. Right. So well, there's. I mean, I wish I had. Actually, I wish there was a node that I could just move this over here. Just well, kind of combine we don't have a like node. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. We we can do this. Let me just do this real quick. Yeah, I'm, I just created a image where he's moved to one side. Try try using that. Let's see if that makes a difference. Oh, I wish I had kept the seat the same. Interesting, not really. But yeah, that wasn't a deal. Yeah, I know. It still insists on on the, on the middle. Just like, yeah, I don't have a great answer for that. <laughs> um, I did try. Let me try one more prompt. That, that was just kind of funny. Uh, let me just uh, see if I can find it. Okay, this prompt actually has nothing to do with this image, but it's like the character is sitting cross legged on the sofa. And I just kind of found out that it was, it gave some funny results. It kind of gives you an idea of what this thing's trying to do. Yeah. See, they just kind of took this style from that and then just kind of attached this, uh, this person in here. Um, I don't know if you guys have a kid, so I see a lot of cartoons and like, this is, the, this is a style of a lot of cartoons, and this was just interesting that it could like, kind of replicate that so quickly. Yeah, this was a fun little accidental discovery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wonder. That's if actually this pretty good. Be... Yeah, it kept anyway, the little yeah, person in the back too. It kept the kept the little. Oh yeah, figure. it kept the little tiny sketch. Yeah. It's actually so not, you, not bad. Honestly, zoom in like, on the, just... on the... Uh, yeah, yeah, the character is sitting cross-legged on the sofa, interesting. and the Dalmatian is lying on the carpet sleeping. So it actually. Did very well on that. So it's that, interesting that kept that your it's, style. <laughs> yeah, it's taking like uh, it's matching certain nouns in the prompt to like elements in that original stitched image. And because like it, actually the image that it gets is just a, like a stitched image, right? There's no like it doesn't actually have any sense of separation between the two. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I wonder if that's. I'm not sure if it actually makes a big st distinction. Because here I'm just saying the character. Yeah. So it's making an assumption that that is the character and not that, you know? Right. So it has some understanding of what the character I'm talking about here. And then I guess that the, the car kind of does look like a sofa because look, it's trying to keep the, the, the mirror here. 
Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. If you want to create some random art styles, sure you can come up with a lot of things here. Anyways, um, I think yeah. the pro version is definitely a lot more capable. Maybe you know, we'll try playing around with, uh, with the pro version at one point. Yeah. It's interesting, but I think there's a lot of fun to be had with this one already. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is this is a more of an advanced yeah. thing we're trying to do here. I'm yeah. sure, sure, a lot can be achieved with just a lot better prompting and uh, potentially a little bit of a changes to the workflow. This is a very, very, very basic workflow right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing that I had to talk about was, I mean, this is not usually the kind of thing that I think we're going to talk about, but I thought this was interesting for, for this week. Uh, there, so there have been one of the big things in the creative community about like the use of AI and that sort of thing is what happens with copyright and is it like, there's an ethical question around it and, and then are we really kind of ripping off copyright holders when we use these AI models? Well, there was actually a, there's a number of uh, court cases right now that are going on in the U S and this week there was a ruling in one of these court cases against Anthropic, uh, where obviously like Anthropic is not really like in the business of making image generation models. I don't think at least, not but, yet, uh, but this was mostly uh, to do with their, um, uh, with their large language models. The a judge basically ruled that everything, uh, that they're doing is more or less kosher Except in so far as um, they have actually in, um, illegally obtained the source material. So a lot of the ways in which they, they kind of obtained the original material mm. that they trained their models on was, um, was, you know, there are these like large torrents of, let's say, books that just fell off a truck somewhere and nobody knows right. where they are. They're just on the internet. In so far as Anthropic has used those, they might be in trouble. But as long as they've actually paid for the original material, essentially using that material to train the AI models is considered f fair use, which I guess kind of makes sense because that's what we do when we read content um, and we like learn it and we can like talk about it again. Because obviously we don't talk about it in the original language verbatim. Right, right. But I thought that was an interesting uh, ruling that might actually have other ramifications going forward. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if they can actually prove whether they paid for it or um that's yeah i that's gonna be interesting i don't know exactly how they know but i think that's pretty much settled that they did actually pirate a bunch of things they which not, they, i mean they, it makes sense uh given the speed i don't think they could have even come to agreements on payments yeah. on all this stuff well apparently like one of the things that they did was they bought a lot of used books and then they actually like digitized them which is actually uh, insanely Wow. This I is a huge that. amount of effort, but the, but then if, in that case, if you're doing that, you're actually not paying the original creators anyway, because you're buying like used books and actually like tearing off the binding and digitizing them. So it's not like the original creator was going to get paid for that because they're all used. Right. They're on the secondhand market. So okay. at some point, some lawmaker will actually have to get involved, but as usual, they tend to kind of kick the can down the road and uh, yeah, the responsibility like, yeah. and, and then it ends up seems like nobody wants to make an actual ruling at this point. Yeah. Well, it just ends, ends up that it's being sorted out through the courts more than anything else. Right. What does that mean for us? Does that mean we can keep using, uh, keep doing what we're doing, just keep using the products and, uh, keep generating images? Well, I think, yeah, it was obviously, uh, we're downstream of the, of the model makers. Um, so as long as we're, as long as we do what the model makers tell us, then I, I guess we're good. Right. But what was also interesting was that there was another study that basically looked at the whole premise of this judge's ruling was that the model is not actually reproducing copyrighted content. Like even though it has consumed a lot of copyrighted material, it's not actually reproducing them to the end user. On the other hand, there are some models that are very good at reproducing copyrighted content, specifically right. Meta's LLMs seem to be able to just give you very long strings that are mm. identical to the original material that they were trained, trained on. So some of the models may be more susceptible to being found in violation than right. others. Cool. Yeah. Do you have, did you have anything else to talk about this week? We wrap it up. No, no, that that's, uh, that's all for me. Awesome. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, this is basically our vision with this podcast is we're going to come every week and, uh, and bring you a few things that are 
uh, happening that are interesting in the world of AI, specifically uh, focused on uh, art, but we're going to talk about other things once in a while. For example, interesting legal cases. Uh, so if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. See you.